In Tavernier, Florida, an extraordinary tale emerges as a woman's ex-boyfriend employs cunning tactics in pursuit of his desires. Law enforcement's riveting investigation leads to a dramatic confrontation, exposing the astonishing extent to which some will defy the law. In early March 2022, a female reported her ex-boyfriend was violating a restraining order that forbade him from making any contact with her in Tavernier, Florida. The ex-boyfriend was identified as a 36-year-old named Claude. The female victim stated Claude was served with a final judgment for protection against domestic violence in January 2022, prohibiting Claude from contacting her, either directly or indirectly. Since the restraining order was served, an investigation revealed that he had been disregarding it by making numerous calls, sending texts, and mailing USB devices containing messages to the female. Additionally, he was using a phone application that altered the display number, effectively concealing his true identity when making contact. But first, let's take a second to hear from today's sponsor, Core. Core Essentials specializes in crafting the most comfortable concealed carry belts with an ingenious hidden track system, featuring over 40 micro-sizing positions for precise adjustments. Their gun belts also feature a robust, reinforced power core, keeping your gear close without sagging. They offer a variety of belt styles, including tactical, leather, and western, with stylish buckle options. Their patented spring system locks the belt securely, but allows for quick adjustments with a touch of the release tab. Buckles and belts within categories are also interchangeable. With core belts, it's one size fits all. To get the perfect fit, simply add six inches to your pants size, cut along the ruler marks to trim the belt, insert the cut end into the buckle, clamp the teeth, and secure it with two set screws. That's it. Core also provides non-gun belts, slim RFID wallets, CCW backpacks, and more. Explore their full collection at coreessentials.com. After some time, the female victim reached out to the Monroe County Sheriff's Office and submitted a collection of mails, voice recordings, and videos that demonstrated Claude's continuous attempts to contact her. These pieces of evidence depicted him trying to persuade the female to withdraw the restraining order against him. Notably, in one of the calls, Claude went to the extent of using a robot voice in an effort to conceal his identity. However, that didn't quite work. In late March 2022, the Sheriff's Office Dispatch received a call on its non-emergency line from an individual claiming to be an off-duty New York State Trooper who reported a possibly intoxicated driver driving recklessly. Sheriff's Office, this is Ashley. Uh, I'm a state trooper from another state. I'm reporting a drunk driver driving northbound on uh, overseas highway. Like, this person's very drunk, very drunk. Okay. Like, Give me the description of the vehicle. It's uh, a white truck. Do you know what type of truck, what make? I'm trying to stay away. This person's really drunk. It's a white Toyota. And what are they doing? Just failure to maintain lane? Yeah, they're swerving everywhere. Okay, what's your last name? Conan. And your first Zachary. name? Zachary. Yeah, I'm still behind it, and uh, they're, they're swerving really bad. I'm not okay. even kidding. All right. You got a cop over here? There's somebody else dispatching that information out. Okay. Yeah, she's wicked. I'm telling you right now, this person is wicked drunk. Oh, my gosh. While the alleged drunk driver was passing deputies on routine patrol, they noticed the reported vehicle being closely followed by a white vehicle, which then pulled over to the shoulder. Shortly afterward, Claude emerged from the driver's seat and dashed towards the deputy's patrol car. He made the claim that his ex-girlfriend was driving while intoxicated and promptly asked the deputies not to inform her about his call or conversation with them. Deputies soon conducted a traffic stop on Claude's ex-girlfriend and had her undergo standardized field sobriety tests. The female victim voiced her suspicion that Claude was behind the traffic stop and harassing her. In the end, she showed no signs of impairment and was released. Ma'am, you can put your foot down and go back to your truck. We'll get you out of here in just a second, okay? We had an off-duty law enforcement officer call you in. That's why we had stopped you, okay? Yeah. An off-duty law enforcement officer observed the violations, which is why we stopped to check on you, okay? So I understand, I guess, a little bit if you're on your phone, but you have to understand maybe we thought no, you were I get, impaired. No, I totally get it. And we really do appreciate your cooperation. I get it. I totally get it. She's fine. Do we have anything else? Or can I release her? Yeah, she's good. I know she was. 
Thereafter, a sergeant with the sheriff's office spoke with Claude by phone. Upon being asked what agency he worked for, he stated he had another call and hung up. Given the gravity of the incident, the sheriff's office conducted a thorough investigation. Detectives managed to trace the phone number used to make the fake DUI report, only to find that it belonged to a phone application designed to block the user's display number, ensuring anonymous calls. Despite this obstacle, the detectives persisted in their investigation. In due course, the detectives successfully acquired records from the phone application company, revealing the 911 call made from Claude's account with the company. Furthermore, they reached out to the New York State Police and confirmed that there was no trooper by the false name originally provided by Claude. Claude was then contacted again by the sheriff's office, where he provided several excuses for the audio recordings of him, such as the female victim stealing his therapy folder from his bedroom, which contained audio recordings of him. When asked if the original file would be on his computer, he said he had deleted it. They explained to him that the evidence does not support his claim and that he may have gone too far trying to get the restraining order dropped. At the end of March 2022, a warrant was obtained for Claude's arrest due to him violating the restraining order and he eventually turned himself in. During the subsequent interview, Claude evaded answering questions by asserting that he was the victim, claiming that his ex-girlfriend had abused him for years and stating that he was fearful and dealing with PTSD. When the investigators played the 911 recording in which he falsely portrayed himself as an off-duty state trooper, Claude denied making the call. Although he admitted knowing the person responsible for the call, he refused to disclose that information. He was shortly released on a surety bond. Following further investigation in late June 2022, another arrest warrant was issued for Claude, this time for the offense of impersonating a police officer. On July 11, 2022, Claude reached out to the sheriff's office and arranged to meet at a designated location in order to turn himself in on the warrant. The return says warrant for impersonating an official and then also a protection order. Who's the one that put out the warrant, MCSO? Us? Detective O'Neill. I don't know what it's for or why, but that doesn't sound good. <laughs> What's the warrant for? Impersonating an official. Okay, for what? What'd you do? My cousin and I called the cops on her for following me, stalking me after with a current restraining order. She was drunk, and they came and let her go, drunk, and literally escorted her into her building. So how does that fall into you impersonating Because your official? my cousin called, my whole entire family's cops, right? Like, literally everybody but me. My cousin was with me in the car on vacation. This is how it went down. I was driving, pulled out of the big chill. Every day, like clockwork, you can bet your ass she's going to know where I am. In fact, she tells O'Neill where I am, finds me at my job, and then tells him, and then he comes to talk to me. And I've been on my best behavior. I pull out, she cuts me off, and probably so drunk didn't even know it was me. Drives into the mangroves, and then back onto the highway, and she's an alcoholic. Without crashing? Dude, she is a complete alcoholic, but like without crashing, swerving, you know, driving like off the side of the road. So my cousin's like, dude, call. Why would you not call? She's called the cops like 80 times, and she's trying to steal your house. I said, you call. You're a cop. Where does he work? New York. He calls, didn't give his real name. Okay. Swear to God, he's 26 years old. And she says, well, that's just my ex calling. So I got arrested for that because O'Neill said that it was me on the phone. Did it come from his phone or your phone? It came from a different phone, but my, it showed he, O'Neill has my phone calling his phone, calling, we, you know, because we're connected in the phones because he retrieved my phone records. So he has something. But he doesn't have like proof that it's my voice. It's not. So what you're saying is so your phone, but without you actually being on the line. Right. It's not like it's not. You know. What am I gonna do? I mean, it's not my voice. So. Do you have a protection order in place? Yeah. Yeah. That's why. Well, I have her on camera like 15 times coming down my blog. Like I'll be at the front door. Oh, sure. Sure. Right. Sure. Right. Sure. Sure. Right. Sure. 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 And then I'll come out and literally panic and leave. Of course, I, I, my whole life is a TV show. I have a dash cam. My house is put up with cameras. It's smart. And no matter how much stuff I show Judge Garcia, he just denies the motion. You've know? already tried showing that she's the one that's contacting you or, or following you or with you. So that's the sucky thing about like protecting She orders. actually came in my house and told me she was going to kill me on camera. I have the video. And then literally took, looked and smelled my bed sheets, went in my bathroom, went through my drawers and left. The okay. local cops I was gonna say lied on police call. record, said that I came to her house. We didn't show them that? I did. I gave it to Judge Garcia. He said she wants to feel safe. I'm going to make her feel safe for two years. No, I know, but what they do about that, her entering your home? Were you guys still married at the time or together or like no, living together? we lived in a different apartment. 
She lied. On record. And the cop even wrote it on the back of the paper. It said she lied. And they didn't do anything about it. And now this guy's destroying my life. Like literally ruining my life. I'm a single dad. I have my kids by myself. Is it kids in common or no? She just wants money. She called me and asked for 80 grand and sent a phone call to Officer O'Neill and said that I had contacted her <laughs> and I still got arrested. So they just confirmed your warrant. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take your hat off, make sure you take everything out of your pocket. Okay. Hey. Right. Why did you turn yourself in on your birthday? Uh, because he was going to come to my house and make a spectacle in front of my family. I think this is her last... Uh, her last shot. <laughs> so she only has 10 more days to respond to the lawsuit or she loses by default. Thanks. So it's like there's a lot of money on the line now. Right. A lot. Ultimately, Claude was charged with felony counts of aggravated stalking, impersonating a law enforcement officer, unlawful use of a two way communication device, misdemeanor counts of misuse of the 911 system, and false report of a crime. Lastly, his bond was set at $75,000. Head over to CodeBlueCam.com and check out our great selection of quality-made merch that won't disappoint.